Hey you guys, this is NATO. Uh, I'm coming to y'all by myself tonight. Um, this is going to be a simple kind of overview as best as I can. As y'all know, I'm very detailed. Um, I'm going to do this as best I can, nice and quickly. Um, just a basic overview of a beautiful game that I've had actually in my library for a very long time. And no, it's not Epoxy, it's not Castle Modern Warfare, though I have just downloaded those and I've tried them out. Let's look at some indie games. I'm thinking about starting doing just some regular indie game reviews and things, just on games that I think really should be put out there and given a positive influence, like this one I'm about to show you. It's called Total Miner Forge, and that's Total Miner colon Forge. And this game, I've had it for a very long time, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up here, but I want you to get a good gist. Um, it's like a mix between RuneScape and Minecraft clash into one game. And this game's got great music. As soon as you bring up the game, you're ready to start here. Um, it's got great music compared to Minecraft. Um, I love C14, but I, honestly, this music blows it out of the water. I mean, if you're any kind of fan of that nice kind of RuneScape style music that's kind of calm, peaceful, but can also be like epic and awesome, this is the kind of game you want to play. Um, it's got, technically speaking, it's got more blocks and more tools to use than Minecraft does. And it's got a, a larger engine for it, too. But um, you can have up to, I think, 20, 24 players in one game or something like that, or 18, I'm not sure. It's a, All I know is it's a lot more than 8, and uh, like Minecraft allows. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a game. I'm going to, I have, let's see, I have two options. I can show you all the more what I made, or start a new one, but I think, just to give you a good idea, I'm going to start a local world. Um, and see, there's pre-18. It even gives you an opportunity to go back and play its original version, but... Before, I had this game back when it was in 1.6, and it really was not a amazing game or anything. And all the reviews I still see about it now are kind of awful and pitiful and look down upon it. And as you can see, this is my world right here with 364 KB. It's not too much, but um, it obviously has a lot starts adding up, so I wouldn't make a million of these maps or anything. But that's not too much. I mean, it's KBs. It's not too much. But um, when you start off a world, it's gonna it's, it generates a thing just like uh, Minecraft does. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that screen here. I'm gonna create a new world for you. We're just gonna do a, a peaceful world, and we're gonna do semi alpine. It gives you a little bit of hills, rocky like hills, and some desert or uh, grass at the same time. So player skills are gonna be off. Um, player skills actually what this does is it allows you to uh, level up your uh, individual skills I choose not to play with them that's just me but your individual skills basically that's like uh, um, there's a lots of different game modes here deathmatch component adventure which is like going off and doing adventure maps um, exploration is just exploring the map survival is surviving nights with stuff um, RPG is a role-playing game and construction is building a map, it's kind of like creative. And then challenge is like, um, kind of like PvP, and arena is kind of the same idea. And deathmatch, same thing. So, and that, they're they're made like that, so the it'll generate a map that sort of generates according to your attribute, as they call it, which is what this category is here. And I really think that's a good idea. But um, this is just the original thing. You can actually choose from a hundred all these different texture packs, you know, but there's a good bit of these, and uh, all of these are free, they come with the game, and some of them are made by players, as you can see here, people that, I guess, help make the game and stuff, smooth sci-fi, simple minor, pixel minor, natural, and all these different things, but the originals up here are the ones I kind of like to play with, just because I haven't really tried many of these, but um, I usually do autumn or spring, the winter's kind of gloomy. So I'm gonna do the autumn. I like the colors on the trees. Um, all it does is just change the colors and give it kind of a different seasonal look. But the other texture packs actually affect all the blocks as well. And uh, yeah, so 
as you can see in the back, it's starting, it's starting to show me uh, trailers and stuff that have texture packs relating to the ARM texture pack. So this is a local match. I'm not going to be playing online. I don't want to get online people, but you can play online with I think up to 18, 16 people, something like that. So it's a lot. Um, just know it's it's kind of like when you get 16 people in, it can sometimes be a little laggy for some. But um, as a host, obviously, as a local host, you're never going to have too many lag issues. Um, I've never encountered too many on this game, but it has so much to offer, and I don't even know where to start, y'all, but um, essentially, I'm going to show you what, uh, th when you start off the game and you're hosting, you plopped in the world just like this, they give you one wooden pickaxe, which is kind of like a wooden pickaxe in Minecraft, same equivalent, and um, I'm basically I'm gonna give you a good idea of what the game's kind of like just off the stores and stuff, and then we're gonna plop into my other world. And I'm gonna show you some stuff after I've collected it. Um, here's a, a little uh, mob right here. This is it's their version of it's like an, it's not a sheep. They have kind of sheep too, but this is like a llama. And um, as you can see, when you hit animals, um, if I can actually hit it, oh, we're in peaceful. That's right. I can't damage animals. But uh, I'll show you on the next world, though, when we get there. One of my favorite things about this game they've added now is when you actually attack animals, there's a GUI that actually brings up numbers and stuff while you're attacking, which just kind of brings in the RuneScape aspect. And there's different uh, weapons you can craft to hit higher numbers and upgrade your skills and stuff when you're playing with player skills to upgrade your combat. So, like, the more you attack, the higher your combat level gets and stuff. So when you start the game, if you're the host, you'll be given these two blocks for free. Um, one is called a block store and one is the tool store. The tool store sells all the tools in the game. And this is the entire entirety of all the tools and items you can use in the game. Anything from like troll hide, cow hides, and leather to every single weapon imaginable, jewelry, all the keys, and keys are just used to unlock doors and ward off different kinds of animals and stuff. And there's so many different kinds of them that drop by all these different animals. So they're really nice, so you can't really guess the right key that unlocks the door. So that's that's always a cool aspect I just figured out. And I'm like I just and that's this is a good point to say. I'm constantly learning new stuff about this game that I never knew. So they've got uh, troll hide helmets, iron, uh, the my bad, the troll hide, which is made from the uh, troll hide collected from trolls, titanium made from titanium carbonide, and there's obviously full sets of armor, and they look really cool. And um, sadly, you don't see the armor on your character, but they have a lot more unlockable character. Their actual skins aren't purchased like Minecraft skins. You unlock them via in-game achievements, like creating your first pickaxe, carving all the different kinds of wood, cutting down like 10 trees, and crafting 10 blocks of wood and sticks and stuff, it unlocks the carpenter skin. And I don't have many of them, but I'll show y'all some. Killing your first character gives you like a ninja, that kind of stuff. Um, what I'm working for right now is the Diablo, which is one of the hardest, it's the hardest animal in the game to kill. Killing it with a ruby sword unlocks a skin. So that'd be really cool, but... Yeah, so these are all your tools, and you can buy them. And as you see, it says down there in the bottom, um, like Ring of Bob, 5,102 coins, and all these different prices around. And the Dynamantium Sword, 34,808 gold each. Well, those prices are actually, there's actually in-game money. And what I realized is, well, early on I figured this out. Every single block you mine, every one in the game. Like, see, I just mined that one block. Now I go to the block store to sell it. Not the tool store. But I go to the block store and see, press A to sell one, X to sell ten. I sell it. Now I've got 20 gold pieces. That one block is worth 20 gold pieces. And then this money, which is the currency here, as you can see. By the but anyway, that's kind of funny. And you can buy stuff like... I'll go mine another one, and then I can actually buy a torch for 21 gold. And this goes on and on, so like when you're mining, it isn't actually worthless to mine all the rocks and stuff around you for strip mining. Because all of those rocks that you get are worth like 10, 20 gold apiece once you get down a couple layers. And as you go down, I'm going to show you in the next map, it actually tears down uh, different colors of rocks and stuff. And as you go down, they increase by 10s. So this is the world generation process, and um, I'm going to... A biome called Semi Alpine, which puts these kind of hills in here with a little snow. But it also gives you some valleys and stuff with forests and trees. Um, and just basic crafting stuff. If you mine one of these um, leaves and one of the green pine leaves that you see over there, you can actually put them together and they have crafting. Um, if you go to your inventory, which is actually B, and then you hit equip, which here says Y, equip, or no, my bad, uh, press start to craft. Um, they have the original crafting here, just like Sword of Minecraft does with the four here. You can make a crafting bench, and in the crafting bench you can get uh, nine, a nine block square, and that's where you create most of the stuff. But if you go here, and you can actually press start again, and they have something called Easy Craft. 
which is just like a Minecraft Xbox 360 edition where you can um, automatically mine things, or you can choose to put them in the thing yourself. And honestly, this game gives you both opportunities. It gives you an opportunity to use the original crafting method or using the uh, blueprints here, like in the old versions of uh, Total Miner. But luckily, you do no longer have to uh, collect all the blueprints of the different uh, keys, except if you're playing. Um, what you call it, uh, Dig Deep, which is a different version, different mode of the game than survival or creative or peaceful. It's actually where you, uh, constantly trying to dig and collect stuff, and that's when you actually do have to worry about player skills and blueprints, and it's kind of a more of a classic game. It's a different kind. I haven't really played it, but, uh, it's different, and I know in that one you do have to collect blueprints, but other than that, you never have to get blueprints. They're all here on, uh, Easy Craft for you, nicely laid out. They tell you the, uh, ingredients and the recipes here, and you can make them yourself via the easy craft or putting them in the crafting table yourself so obviously I'm not gonna go around and build a, a crafting table and you'll show y'all how to survive you'll hopefully know how to do that it's actually really simple um, same controls as minecraft and stuff um, but one thing one feature I do like is you can press select here and it builds up a map and this map is actually the entire uh, um, landscape that I've been able to see so far it's actually kind of a square it goes I'm pretty sure it goes out here too and this square, you can actually set markers on it. See, like right where I am, I can set a marker here. Just press X, and then I can actually set a marker, and I'm just going to label this one Start, and it actually labels it. So when I walk around the map, say I go like far away from here, I want to be able to find my uh, home base that I put my stores in, because it's really hard to buy stores, it's really expensive, as you can imagine. So you really only get like a couple of those unless you get both rich. So if I get away from it, you want to be able to find your way back, and a lot of the hills kind of look the same. Well, then you press select again, you go back to your map, it builds it up for you. And see, I walk this way, and here's the start here. So if I go this way a little ways, then I bring up the map again and go, oh, hey, I'm going the wrong direction. So I go back this way, and then I'm able to re-navigate myself back to the start. Um, one thing they haven't necessarily done too well of a job of is establishing directions very easily on the map. Like, there's no actual pointer that says where you're going. So it's really kind of confusing. You have to kind of watch your coordinates down there in the bottom uh, left-hand corner and watch which direction the numbers are going up to help you get to the longitude, latitude, or the block via block, whatever, um, coordinates of your um, marker. So that's uh, one way to do it. But it's I think that's a really cool aspect. And you also can, um, when you set up uh, multiplayer and stuff, which I'm not really going to do on this video, but if you set a multiplayer, you can actually see all your players on the map and stuff. You can toggle people admins right there. You have quick controls. And just like Minecraft, this game does all for uh, permissions. And the permissions, uh, adventures, like attack animals and walk around. Edit is actually being able to destroy the map. Creative is being able to use the shops. Fly is while you're in creative mode, getting able to fly. Map, be able to build that map I just showed you. Chat, be able to use in-game chat uh, rooms. It actually creates a lot of lag, so I usually keep that one off. Uh, grief, using any kind of major grief items that explode the map or destroy blocks. And then uh, save, which allows them to um, save their data when I save the game. And admin abilities, which allow them to um, control different aspects of the game and make other people admins and things like that. So that is permissions. Um, you can, um, what the skins are unlockable, like I said earlier, with via uh, achievements and stuff. And unlockable skins, like the carpenter here and stuff, I've unlocked. Craft your first workbench and things like that. Chop down a tree, you get a little tree hugger and things like that. Kind of funny. And they have different capabilities, different places, and different modes where you can actually use them over on the right. You see there when they pop up. And you spawn as a boy, you can get a girl, original, girl two, and all these different things going down. And the one I'm trying to get right now is called a. Uh, Diablo. It's kind of a demon kind of thing. And it says, kill me with a ruby sword. And, uh, it's right here. And I almost killed one. You have to use a bow and stuff, because those things hit, like, 53s. You only have 143 health, no matter what you do. So, alright, so before it gets to night time here, I'm gonna go ahead and swap over to the other map while I continue explaining this. Um, so, I'm not gonna save that. But, um, when you play, um, if you play local and you go on, you get a lot less lag and a lot of less having to deal with people uh, popping into your world all the time. But um, basically, uh, I'm gonna uh, when I play, I usually play it on normal so you can get some of the harder animals and monsters and stuff around your base a lot easier, so you don't have to go travel for them. I keep PVP off just in case someone wants to, you know, mess with me. So we're gonna start the game up here. And I'm gonna show y'all what the uh, what it's like once you get going and get a place going you're able to establish weapons and be able to 
defend yourself adequately. And then I'm going to show you how the uh, mine tears down as you go down. Um, so it'll be pretty interesting. And we haven't been playing very long in this game, on this particular world even. But um, there's so much stuff. I'm, like I said earlier, I'm continuously learning more and more about this game the more I play it. So this is our uh, little base headquarters. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but... Um, we have locked doors and stuff that only certain people can open with certain doors, or the person that put it down. Um, I've actually collected, if you kill mobs, you actually get really decent stuff. I've gotten both uh, item shops, both shops, the block and the item shop, from the uh, mobs in here. And I've used a mob spawner to sp spawn trolls in here, and they're actually really powerful. They're really good for me. Uh, he had 18, and see, if you see in the bottom left, there's a little red bar right below my uh, bow and arrows there. That's actually my health, and it regenerates, and um, you can put on armor, as you see up here in my inventory, and they actually give you stat bonuses here. They tell you your stats, like attack is minus 1,300, because this troll hide, though, it's a hide, just like in RuneScape, the hides actually increase your range. So my range is like off the, off the, his house. My defense is really high up there, because this is actually one of the most expensive armors compared to titanium and diamond, diamantium is the only, it's like the third best or something. And you get it from killing these guys right here, which I kind of spammed and trapped. And if you get far enough back, you actually can just barely sneak in without having to, um, so I can hit, I can melee them probably from right here, seeing they can't hit me. So I've been tr spamming those and, uh, getting troll hides and great drops off of them. And that's really nice, but, so, as you can see, I've got some really nice stuff here. Um, I haven't really upgraded my shield, but I got a ruby sword and all these different ores and blocks and rhyolite and all these weird things that will sell for a lot more than just clay, obviously. Keys are really common drops and things like that, but um, they have a lot of cool, interesting blocks. Um, like they even have a little. Hey, I'll show you. It's a total miner, total invaders game. I haven't quite figured out how it works, but um, basically, uh, it's a block that actually works as a video game. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but when you operate it, apparently there's a way to play it and get high scores and stuff. And there's a unlockable skin that you can unlock from uh, getting so far in it. But this is my little room here, and uh, they. They actually, when they play this game, they don't actually have redstone. It, it doesn't actually travel via wire, at least. They actually use what's called a Wi-Fi transmitter, and I've actually changed the texture of this block right here. This is my Wi-Fi transmitter. And uh, see, it says used to transmit power on or off signal to Wi-Fi receivers. Well, you get a transmitter, and then you get a receiver, which is actually underneath my safe there. It'll operate the pa it'll power the safe and unlock it. Um, so whenever the switch is on, I can open the safe, but whenever the switch is off, I can't open the safe. There's lots of things like that, um, like how Wi-Fi works like that, so you don't actually have to build tunnels of redstone everywhere. That was so annoying sometimes. But it's really quick, and you put one block there, one block there, put them on the same frequency, and you can go pretty far, decently far away, like all the way outside of our borders and stuff with uh, redstone being able to power things. So this is the mine real quick. I'm going to show you all this, probably the last thing. But as you go down, see, we started with clay. I think this is sandstone and now I think we're in basalt and it continuously changes and it goes down and down and down and these are all the rhyolites and diamantonites and all these different ites right in here and then we get down into the coal and then we go past that and then all these weird smooth ones and then the serpentine and uh, as you go down they change colors but starting at the top the clay I think is only worth 10 or it's less than that and then it gets to 10 and it goes to 20 and then 30 and then 40 and then 50 and then 60 and I think the serpentines were 70 a piece and this stuff must be 80 and then uh, uh, he's waiting on going down into the next level because it's granite and it's gonna be like 90 and that's 90 per block and obviously you have to increase your pickaxe um, value as you go down and down so he has to mine a lot and then wait till he gets the next pickaxe and then he goes down gets to this level and he has to mine a lot before he's ready to go down to the next level so that's I think that's pretty cool and so it's actually worth going down some and mining isn't completely pointless because you can sell every block in the game for at least some gold and uh, gold can buy you anything else in the game so that's something I wish Minecraft had but it's a little interesting because you can get blocks that you like can't necessarily make like you in Minecraft unless you're in creative you have to make everything you want well in this game if you do a lot of one thing like if you mine a lot you're really good at mining you get a lot of blocks you get rewarded by getting awesome things because you can sell all of it and get gold if you don't want to use it you can sell it get gold and get some mixtures you do want or wouldn't be able to obtain normally in the game or don't know how to obtain it so there's just a lot of little things like that that make the game I think a lot better 
Um, the one thing I am gonna highlight the negatives real fast before I go. Um, there are some like water physics problems in the game. Uh, by some, I mean there's a really bad water physics problem in the game. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna uh, show you how this works because I'm a little lazy and it's kind of taking too long. This video is a little long, but um, so I'm just gonna. If you go out and you find like I'll go over here and I'll show you. There's a little pond next to our uh, one of a kind fortress over here if you call it that. And there's, see this lake over here? Well, if you try to destroy blocks and stuff and go around it, what ended up happening is, say this lake was up on that mountain, top on the mountain, it digs down in, you're up on, say we're on top of a mountain, you dig down in. Well, if I destroy like the edge, and there's like a cliff right here, and I destroy that block right there, the actual water source blocks, they're all water source blocks. There's just a thing as a water flow block or a uh, semi block. There's, they're all source blocks. And every water source block is infinite as far as its range capabilities. If you destroy one block and the water is able to leak out onto the mountain, it just shoots out horizontally and it'll cover the entire map in every direction. So your entire map is now flooded. It lags forever and then your game finally comes back. And that definitely is not very fun. So, uh, if I get a lot of likes and stuff on this video and y'all like really want to see it, I can show you on my last world that got flooded. On one half it was water, and then on one half it was lava. And that happened while I left it alone for like 5-10 minutes. And it's really not very fun. And if you've played the game, they really haven't fixed that. So if you've played it in the past, you know that that's been a problem. And it still is a problem. But other than that, um, I really think it's got... Um, great potential, and I think a lot of people give it uh, really bad reviews and stuff, but it really does have some good qualities, and, like, I just noticed that, I forgot to mention, on the left, on the top left, you see that little tiny map right there? It actually shows me, on the block I'm on, this one block, see if I turn this way, it changes, it shows me all the blocks all around me for like 10 or so blocks, all the way down, you can see the base below me, and uh, it actually works within one block, see if I get here, now you see the door and everything on this row of blocks in all directions, and if I turn this way, now you see everything on this row of blocks in all directions. So that was really cool, it helps you mine and stuff, like on the stairs and stuff, it helped me locate things, like down below me right now, like 10 blocks straight down right here is uh, nice minerals. So if you're the host, only the host gets this, but I mean if you are the host, it's really nice to have that. And it's really cool, so there's a lot of little things about it. Um, if y'all want me to, I can make more detailed reviews of the game so you can get a better idea of what it's like. Um, if I can get some people on later, we might make a gameplay video later tonight or maybe tomorrow. So that'll be interesting. and. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go into more detail later about all the different weapons and things, so, uh, uh, stay tuned. I'm probably going to do some more indie game reviews and things like that in the future, um, so make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and, uh, thanks for watching, guys.